uh, Haunting of Whaley House. Uh, what we're going to do is uh, just go right into the q and I'm going to call up uh, Jose Prendes, director. Come on up, Jose. Hey guys, thanks for staying for the, the Q&A. I want to bring somebody up real quick because he has to go. Our very own SEAL, Howard McNair. <laughs> Say a few words about uh, working with me <laughs> and the ghost of the way they have. I thought it was wonderful working with Jose. He's really got a wonderful way of working with actors. And uh, I think it's dark in here. <laughs> oh, sorry, sorry. Anyway, so I had a wonderful time. And uh, yeah, I think that's been about it. I had a good time. I don't look like Seal, though. <laughs> if you are, anyway. But um, yeah, that's it. I'm, I'm a man of many few words. <laughs> My man, a few words, but um, I enjoyed it and uh, it was a great pleasure working with the asylum team. Thank you for the opportunity. Well, <laughs> very grateful. Yeah. Yeah, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right, let's uh, let's start bringing up some cast. Uh, Stephanie Greco, come on up. Penny. Penny. Our lead. Let's follow her with, uh, with Graham Denman, who, uh... Craig. Craig! Craig, and a composer as well. Is he smoking? Fuck that guy. All right. Okay, he's not gonna talk. Next person. Uh, Ariel Rackfield. <laughs> Woo! Vanessa! Okay, she's saying goodbye now. Oh. All right. Yes. Uh, uh, yeah, we're, we're, we're... Carolina! Uh, Carolina Grappa, come on up. Alex? Oh, yeah. Alex is not here. Fuck that uh, guy. Aww. He's on the list. Is he on the list? Yes, he is. What else is on the list? Uh, Maria. I know Maria's here. Maria. So Maria Olsen, yeah. our, our, our scary <laughs> lady is coming out. And Ralph Tarr. Ralph? Where are you? Yay! Yay. Thomas Bailey. Uh, you know what? Let's. I'll get him. I'll get him. Yeah, put yeah. you in the balls. Please. Um, <laughs> hey, Robert Eunice, come on down. Officer Jones. Uh, John Condelick, you're here, right? Come on down. Yay! Yay! John Condelick, he got hit by the car in the beginning of the movie. Am I on the prices, right? You are. <laughs> All right, let's, uh, let's start out with a few questions. Uh, you made this movie for the asylum, uh, yes. and they are notoriously tight on schedule and budget. Tell me about some of the challenges making the movie. Uh, yeah. Uh, well, first of all, they said, okay, we want a, we want a haunted house movie. So um, I pitched them a whole bunch of ideas, and they said, no, it's got to be Whaley House, because it's got to be Whaley House. So I had to make the movie Whaley House. Um, obviously, uh, it took some license with the, uh, the ideas and uh, the hauntings that actually happened in the Whaley House because this didn't really happen. Um, nothing near this happened, uh, but so I just kind of played a few of the uh, hauntings. And um, wrote the script in like two weeks, maybe a little less actually, two weeks for the finished draft. Um, and then um, honestly we were shooting in a week and a half after that. Um, so we were in production. I, I mean, well, no, I, I, the script was done, and then we went into pre-production for two weeks, and then we shot for two weeks. Wait, we didn't know. Well, Wait. you didn't know. Well, let's, <laughs> let's get into that in a minute. So um, it was a two-week shoot total. It was, yeah, it was 12 days, and uh, it was hectic. And if you notice, uh, I wrote the movie so that we could actually shoot it in 12 days, so a lot of the scenes are basically long scenes. Um, and believe it or not, Kurosawa was kind of inspiration on how I shot the movie, because we got... Ten fucking people in the scene, uh, you're not gonna get coverage on everybody. So you try and get these cool master shots. You can kind of frame everybody and make everybody, you know, visible in the frame. That's what that was the, and that was the biggest challenge was um, time uh, to get everything. The end was a little more intricate. Like Penny has a big fight with the oil man, the demon guy, and uh, unfortunately we had two hours to shoot that. Two. And it still hurts because that was that was the worst day on the shoot because two hours and we didn't get to really get oil man and really 
milk him for all he's worth, which would have been cool. All right. Let's, uh, let's actually open up a little bit and... Lee's here. Oh. Lee! Oh, Lee. I forgot. Yes, come down. Where are you? <laughs> Lee? She was the, uh... Larry, Larry. Oh, Larry, Larry. Come here, Larry, man. Larry, Larry, Larry. Sorry, Tom. So Lee got chopped her head off. And uh, Larry was uh, was the, the fellow in the beginning that did not want to go in the way. He was the smart one. Uh, you know what? Maybe I should, I don't know, for the stretches, but... You keep that, because you're hosting. I'll pass it. Hello. Hi. Well, let's, let's, let's ask some basic questions that everybody can kind of answer. Um, number one, do you believe in ghosts? I do. Okay. And uh, and how did that inform your performance? Um. Well, I was kind of on edge the entire shoot because this one over here has a tendency to pull uh, pranks and practical <laughs> jokes. So going in, I and first of all, the house where we were shooting was apparently haunted. Three people were murdered there? Three people. Actually Three people there, yeah. were actually murdered there. So I was a little on edge the entire time. Um, that probably helped me. <laughs> Just looking over my shoulder every five seconds. But um, yeah, I mean, I do believe in ghosts. Thank God I haven't seen anything yet. Um, but yeah. Do you want to talk about how you got the role and how much fun that was? I can. Do you, you want to do the ghost thing first and then come back to that? Or Let's go ahead. Let's look. You've got the microphone. Go ahead. Okay. Um, okay. Jose wrote this script. We've Covered known that. each other for <laughs> maybe five years. And he called me up. He said, I'm writing this haunted house story, and I think you'd be great for the lead, Penny. Um, he had me come in, put me on tape for the producers. Uh, that was like maybe two weeks, a week and a half, before we started shooting. Yeah, something like that. So they sent the tapes over to the producers, and we were waiting and waiting and waiting and waiting. The same thing with Ariel. We kept calling each other. Did you hear anything yet? Did you hear anything? We're waiting and waiting. Finally. That's a practical joke because they played too. Oh, maybe yeah. I don't know. <laughs> I'll be here forever. But um, three days before we started shooting, Jose called. Three days. Three. To do that entire script. Yeah. Uh, prepare for it. Absolutely. But um, so he called. It wasn't and he, my fault. No, it wasn't his fault. It was the producers taking forever to make a decision, so <laughs> they finally did, and Jose called. And people like giggle, no. <laughs> <laughs> and Jose called, and he said, yeah, so uh, I have some news. You got the part? And I was like, yeah, oh, yeah. yeah. I was at work, so I was trying to be quiet. But, um, <laughs> I was pretty excited. So then we had three days to prepare for a 12-day shoot, and I think I was in almost every single scene. Yeah. So that was a little intense and scary, and lack of sleep and you know, it was intense but it was fun and totally worth it i hope everyone enjoyed it so yeah yeah all right <laughs> ariel are you a believer um okay so funny story i'm a i come off as a little bit of a smart ass um but i do i i i've had a, i had an experience recently that absolutely made me a believer up to that point i was of the mind that people perhaps experienced things um, that were maybe accented by their lovely imagination. So I, I actually on my uh, on my honeymoon I, I experienced something. So as of now I am very much a believer. Um, <laughs> you experienced something on your honeymoon. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I opened up the door for that one. All right. So. Uh, <laughs> oh. Um, One more detail. So the, uh, the Hotel Colorado in, in lovely Glenwood Springs, uh, Colorado, uh, is apparently haunted. And my newlywed husband and I were not aware of this fact, even though we were co no, Colorado natives, uh, and decided to stay there. Um, and one night, at about 2 o'clock in the morning, I wake up from a terrible dream to a pounding on the wall. And thinking that might just be really obnoxious guests next door, you know, I was freaking out a little bit, but not too much. It started getting louder and louder and louder, and it sounded like there were bowling balls eventually hitting the wall. Um, so that was frightened, very frightening. I'd retreat to three-year-old mode, where I'm like under the covers and hiding and hoping that the noises go away. <laughs> Hank turned on the TV, and I was scared about poltergeist stuff happening, but 
we're still here. Um, so that, that long story short made me, made me into a believer because there was no one else staying around us. There were no parties that came in late that night and there was no other explanation for the phenomenon. And being the jaded, you know, Hollywood girl that I am, I was looking for any possible, any possible excuse for that noise. I couldn't find any. So yes, now I am a believer. All right, well, uh, going further from that, uh, you have probably the most intense uh, uh, transformation in the film. <laughs> Tell us a little bit about uh, prepping for that. Um, we, we just a, a note first, we, um, uh, Steph and I shot, and, and Lee, uh, shot a movie called Chemical Peel in uh, December and January, which was also very emotionally intense. And then right after we wrapped that, Maria and I were shooting a movie called Live in Fear, which was also very emotionally intense. So I was well past the point of exhaustion by the time that I got on to Whaley. Not that I'm complaining, but um, it was, I was running on empty from day one. Um, and fortunately, I felt safe enough with Steph, with Carolina, with Graham, with Alex, with Jose, with the entire cast and crew where I was able to really hold everything that I possibly could and delve into it. And plus, I'm a little bit of an emotional whore. So <laughs> it, it's fun. That's the, that's the fun side, is knowing you can go balls to the wall and be OK as soon as they yell cut. And again, thankfully, I had an amazing cast and crew to work with where I was able to go to those places safely. Uh, well, almost safely, I'll almost. say. Almost. <laughs> almost safely. Yeah, he, uh, the prank that I was telling earlier. So Jose says, yeah, someone else got your part. <laughs> and, and this is while we're, while we're shooting, live in fear. And I'm like, you fucker. <laughs> you fucker. I don't, I don't remember that. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like you. She's <laughs> and, uh, but it turned out the next day that he was just totally messing with me. Um, I hope. Well, you're in right. the movie. Yeah, <laughs> yes, there you go. Yeah, okay. All right. Well, thank you everybody for coming, yeah. first and foremost. Yeah. Um, it's, it's, quite a, it's quite a really like different and great experience to watch it like in a theater with an audience yeah. and not with like your family and friends. <laughs> well, well, you guys are all pretty much friends, I think. Right? <laughs> not my friends, but other people's friends. <laughs> um, or, yeah. I'm sorry? <laughs> what? 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 So yeah, I absolutely 100% believe in ghosts. I don't, I don't, I've never really seen anything that I could tell. I don't have any cool stories, but I don't doubt it and I don't want to have a story to tell. So <laughs> I just let them do their thing. I do my thing and we're cool. So, yeah. <laughs> Now, as far as the as far as the role that that, uh, that you played, uh, how do you how do you uh, I guess bring fear into, into into a scene? Because you have a, you have a pretty good jump scare and then you die. Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm in it very short, and it wasn't really hard to be the girl that's like, guys, we shouldn't do this, guys, come on, and then I die. Um, What's EVP, guys? What's EVP, guys? <laughs> um, but no, I think it, it's really difficult to. Uh, keep the emotional continuity of fear when it's light outside and there's a soccer game and there's like sweaty crew guys <laughs> around you like well, we shot it know. during the day by the way yeah we shot it all during the day so it that's that was really challenging and that was actually my biggest concern going into it but i think it's just about shutting the outside world and really going within and believing that you're really in the situation and that you are alone and uh like when i shot that attic scene or not the attic when i come down the stairs and i die like they were, everybody was downstairs and I was upstairs by myself while they were setting up. So that was not so difficult to do. Because when you're in a haunted house with, with people, you're like, yeah, this is fine, it's just a house. But when you're alone in a part of a house, it's like, I don't care who you are, your mind wanders and you're like, what, I don't know, what, what if something happened? So um, yeah, I think that answered your question. In a long -winded way. Absolutely. Thank you. All right, Maria. Hi. Hi, uh, once again, uh, are you a believer? Uh, absolutely, I have pictures. Um, yeah, and there is a story, and no, I'm not going to be telling it because it's not only me, it's two of us, and we have to decide jointly whether or not we want to tell the story. But I have at least 80 pictures. Very intrigued yes, by this. On my laptop, yeah. Uh, and going further, actually, uh, you're a believer. What did you, uh, did you did you pull from that to actually play? The actually, uh, that happened um, after I shot Whaley House. Yeah, but I, I've always, I hadn't had any personal experiences up until Whaley House. My mom used to see things, she used to tell me stories, friends of mine used to see things, still do, tell me stories, but I was like, sure I believe you, yeah, yeah, and totally believe them. But then I saw something too. 
and I have to trust God. It's a whole different level of believer. Yeah, yeah, it's a whole yeah. different thing now. Yeah. Very cool. All right, we'll keep on going. Uh, I'm actually a little bit of a skeptic about ghosts, but uh, my wife is and claims to have had a couple of experiences that uh, when I wasn't around. But uh, after having me sit through. I don't know how many hundred uh, celebrity ghost story <laughs> uh, episodes. I, I'm certainly not going to call any of them out. So, uh, <laughs> and for the purpose of the part, I uh, just got myself into being a ghost, <laughs> trying to figure out what that would be That's like. That's a great ghost. <laughs> All right, we'll go to Graham. Who? Uh, who Hello, calls? Graham. Are you a believer? Yeah, I have my days. <laughs> but, well, mostly, yeah. No, I believe in ghosts. And uh, uh, a little further, you, uh, you both acted in this film, and you composed the score as well, too. I did. Thank you. Tell us a little bit about juggling those, those two different responsibilities. Uh, well, my, as far as the acting goes, Jose called me one day, and he says, hey, I wrote this part of the movie for you. You don't have to audition, blah, blah, blah. You got it. You got it. And then I <laughs> fucking had to audition. It fucking sucked. It's not my fault. I hated that. I know it's not your fault. I know. Yeah, that was the, the, that was the producer's fault, right? That is, yeah, yes. but um, but Jose was a fan of my music. Uh, I'm a singer songwriter, and and up until this point, I had only done like my own acoustic music and sang and stuff. And he says, "I really like your music. Like, what would you think about doing the score for the movie?" And I was like, well, "I'm not gonna sing like a bunch of emo shit. Like, what's, like, what's that gonna be?" And then he said he wanted like a very like dark, old school, 80s kind of score. And I'm a huge John Carpenter fan, especially because of his scores. Half the time, I think his scores are actually better than some of the movies he's made. But um, with that, I was also a fan of Goblin, and I, I really enjoyed a, a lot of old, uh, you know, Italian horror films. So I just kind of went for that, and, and he showed me a lot of movies like The Fog and Prince of Darkness to go off of. And I got to experiment with like a whole new realm of music. Like I don't know how to play piano. I taught myself how to play piano while scoring, and I just taught myself how to do things. And eventually, I just figured it out. Um, and I'm actually really proud of it. And ever since, I, I just finished scoring another movie, um, and I've got a couple of other projects coming up. Even one with you, sir. Yes, one of those is mine. Yes. <laughs> um, but no, I had a blast with that. And as far as the acting goes, this was the first time that uh, I'd ever had a real chance to show off my real acting capabilities. Like, I've been in horror movies before and stuff, but I never had, like, a full role where I was able to really uh, just show many different ranges of, of what I could do. And, I mean, there's scenes where I watch and I cringe and I go, ah, oh, shit, I could have done that better. Mm -hmm. Fuck. You, you do know. get the best line of the film, though. That's the, I, I know you think I'm lying because I'm an asshole. Yeah. <laughs> I actually, I think the best line in the film it was in ADR, which for those of you who don't know, ADR is when you go in and you record the, the voiceovers that they didn't catch on set so that they can fill in the space. And there was one where Carolina goes, holy crap, what's wrong with Seal? Yeah. And I think that's like, that is the most like non-racist racist thing I've ever heard. It's super funny though. Um, but uh, no, I just, I had a blast doing it. I had a blast acting in it. And I really hope I get to do more. And honestly, by the way, thank you for all of you guys sticking around yeah. for this. Because this is like a huge moment for me. This is my favorite theater in the entire world. So for me to see like a movie that I was a part of here and have people care enough to hear me talk and hear everybody else talk, that's fucking awesome. So thanks. I appreciate it. All right, Robert. Do you believe in ghosts, sir? Well, <clears throat> I think I'm in denial and we'll stay there. Uh, it's kind of like a don't ask or don't show yourself and then I won't have to uh, believe. But then I am an avid uh, ghost hunters watcher, love the show. So there's, there's this whole turmoil and denial and everything going on. I'm gonna keep it that way for as long as possible. <laughs> Head the sand, just, just we go on around. Yeah, 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 nothing to see here, nothing to see here. All right, you come into the film a little bit late. Yeah. Um, <laughs> that, that, that's the way I actually survived it, by coming in <laughs> Exactly. Uh, basic question. Uh, not a question, but just a, a, a side note to Robert's uh, being in the movie. So, I'm driving back from location. The next day, we're going to shoot the cop scene, and I'm looking through the stuff, and I go, oh, fuck, we didn't cast a cop. The what? We didn't cast a fucking cop. So I call Robert. I go, Robert, what are you doing? I'm probably doing nothing, right? You want to be in a movie? <laughs> No, no, no. Let's, 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 let's be a little bit more clear here. That's the question I was going to ask. It, it wasn't exactly like that. I get a text saying, uh, is it the letter R, the letter U, 33-32. Uh, and I'm like, 
What? Is he asking your measurements there? Or? And I'm like, yeah, I didn't think we were had that kind of relationship going on or anything like that. He was asking for sizes. And then I realized he's talking about my pant size. And I'm like, well, I've just been on a crash diet and I think it can be a 34. And he's like, okay, you fit in a costume? You've got the role. So, hey. You know, all you actors, as long as you can fit in the costume, that's all it takes, really. That was pretty much all it takes. All right, well, John, we're going to go to you next, and tell us to believe in ghosts. Oh, uh, I've always been a skeptic, but until after the movie, we, me, Jose, and Bobby, the editor, we went ghost hunting. Bobby, our editor, where's Bobby? You went ghost hunting. My next question, tell us about that little ghost hunting experience. That experience we filmed, uh, I filmed, I brought my camera and you know, shot night vision and we were in Pasadena underneath uh, some old bank and they had vaults down there and apparently a woman was like, was she raped and then left for dead? She was raped and left for dead. That yeah, right. that's, you know, <laughs> that, it's a party. And yeah. so it was pitch black down there. We were down with a few ghost hunters and whatnot. And, it's a um, haunted house now, actually. It's the Old Town Haunt, I believe is what they call it. Stuff like that. And it's really haunted. And, you know, being a skeptic, I am open. I'm not necessarily a skeptic because I'm not that arrogant to say I don't believe in this. I'm just open to the ideas of anything. And so I think that uh, I can process the information a little bit better that way. And just like, you know, because if you're going in biased thinking I believe in ghosts, then you're going to think, like, oh God, what was that noise? Oh no, that was your stomach? Oh, okay. <laughs> oh, what was that? Oh no, no, no. And, but there was a lot of that going on, but, um, <laughs> But then uh, there was this guy that we were with, and not, not in our party, but he was in the group, and he was sitting in the corner and he kept complaining about he, he felt like drained and he had to get out of there. And we're like, are you sure? You, you gonna be okay? And he's like, I, I think I'll, be, I'll stay for a few minutes. And um, a few minutes go by and he's like, fuck this, I need to get out of here. And we're like, wow, this guy is on his chain. <laughs> and so he leaves and we're like, go, someone go sit in that corner and you know, hold the EMF meter, Jose's. Ray's shit, that's Jose's shit. It is. In the movie. Yeah. <laughs> and so, you know, all that ghost equipment's real, and he was holding that EMF meter in there, and it was like spiking, going off the fucking charts. Yeah. And um, basically, long story short, I was filming it, and I was looking at the guy's face, and um, my camera, it's on autofocus, it'll go in and out of focus every now and again, but I've owned it for years, and I've never seen anything like this before. But it was almost as if the fields in the camera and it just like right in front of his face. It was almost like the, the movie The Ring, but ev just the f right in front of his face was, it was, it was just, you know, freaking the fuck out. And we're gonna post that <laughs> online, are, right? Yeah. So, yeah. Oh, yeah, we've got a Facebook page if you guys aren't uh, fans and there's, oh, hello. Uh, yeah, Facebook fan page, and we've got actually extra special features that didn't show up on the DVD. So, uh, like bloopers that Love fortunately bloopers. got cut out. Uh, because of, there's no space on the DVD. Thanks, Asylum. Facebook.com yeah. um, slash Haunting of Whaley House. Go find it. <laughs> <laughs> Go like it. But yeah, so I guess I, I'm kind of still open to the idea. It wasn't completely like, yes, ghosts exist, but it was weird. And I, I got creeped out, and we all got creeped out, but it was fun. And, you That's know, fun. so, yeah. yeah. All right, tell us a little bit about your role in the film. Oh, God. That guy. Um, I get hit by a truck, and... <laughs> Now, now, as I recall, this is a character that exists in another of Jose's scripts. Yeah. Have you read that script as well, too? I haven't read it. He told me about it. Uh, uh, can I say the title? Yeah. Sure. Okay. Uh, Bed Bugs. And um, basically he told me, you know, you're basically this 16, 17-year-old version of, what was it, like a 10-year-old, 12-year-old? Uh, 12 or 14. 12, 14 14-year-old. And he's like, you're the leader of the Goonies. You're Mikey from Goonies. And I'm like, oh, okay. What, is, what does Mikey look, act like as a like, teenager? But... You know, that's Sean Astin. I don't know. He's Lord of the Rings shit. I don't know. But, um, you know, it was fun. It was just the one day. And uh, at the last day of the shoot, I didn't have the pleasure to work with all the rest of the guys. So, But it was cold as shit. And, you know, like snots going down my face. And we had like, OK, let's go. And really quick. And then, you know, cut. Oh, and just let it all out in a verbal freezing. Um, I couldn't, like, my teeth were jittering. I couldn't get a line out. But as soon as they say action, I'm like, okay, freeze up and go. But um, the funniest story that day, though, was uh, improvising this stuff. You know, but right before we shoot, Jose's like, we're gonna change some shit, and so we did some stuff. And um, there's a whispering about. Can you hear it? Okay. Um, anyway, 
Uh, but basically, um, he told me to scream. Not normal, but you told me to scream ladybird, how you, how you described it. And I asked him, well, why? Can I scream normal, please? <laughs> and so I did the, I humored him, and I did the ladybird scream, but then, uh, yeah, there it is, you know, and it works for some reason. But yeah, and I was, uh, you know, happy to be a part of it. I hope, hopefully, I can work with uh, Jose and the rest of the gang again. All right, Lee, are you a believer? Hello, yes, I'm a believer. I've uh, had quite a few experiences, actually. Um, I don't know if it made it on to the extras, but we didn't it care. did. It did. Yeah. Well, then you should go watch the extras. <laughs> um, <laughs> Give us a preview. There's, there's a instance where I'm spending the a little time at my parents' house up in southern Utah, and there have been instances in this town of a wandering spirit that goes into people's houses and does things. So it's about two o'clock in the morning. I'm sound asleep. I hear the door open. The door slams. I sit up and I'm like. Okay, it's the wind, I'm good. I lay back down, and I and I didn't see anything, but I totally felt it. You know when you're in a room, and you can feel something happening around you? Well, I felt this, whatever it was, walk from the front door, past where the room is that I'm at, into the kitchen, back out, and come out to the door where I'm sleeping, because the living room's here, the bedroom's here, and I can feel it staring at the door that I'm behind, and I could feel the, the leer, like, the only way I can describe it is, for you in the far back, it's a really good, bad face. <laughs> but it was, it was terrifying. And I, and I yelled. I said, um, this is my house. You do not have any power here. And it, whatever it was went away. I got up and left. I went to where my parents were. And I slept on the couch the rest of the week. <laughs> <laughs> OK, as far as the film goes, holy shit, you axed the hell out of yourself in the movie. Yeah. Didn't it um, look like I was having a blast? <laughs> Yeah, tell us about working with uh, with uh, appliance effects like that. Um, it was really, really cool. So I, I spent like, I think it was an hour in the chair off and on. And they taped this thing. It was a big piece of like um, latex. latex. Thank you. Um, with little hoses in it so they could pump the blood out. And it was, it looked like I had been thrashed. It was really cool. And it was freezing, by the way, the night that we did this shoot. Um, and they pumped so much of this fake blood through it that I was drenched. And we did it like twice. Yeah. And it was cold. <laughs> but it was a really great time. Everyone was so wonderful. It was the best set I've been on, attitude wise. Good job. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Larry, you're looking lonely over there. Tell us about uh, if, if you believe in ghosts. Um. That's an interesting question because uh, my com I'm from Memphis, Tennessee, <laughs> and we're number one for Kojic, uh, Church of God in Christ. And I was raised understanding spirits and how they can inherit people at different times. So you deal with people based on their spirit, not necessarily who you believe they are. So in the sense of ghosts, I do believe in spirits, and we all have one. So, yeah, absolutely. You need to make an audio book. Do you want to switch that? You're done. Um, and uh, go ahead and tell us about your role and how you were cast. Um, I came in and I auditioned for Jose and Allison. And when I walked in, I just tossed the sides on the ground. And then Jose was like, he's ready. And Allison was like, are you ready? And Jose was like, he's clearly ready. <laughs> and I did the, um, that scene. And Jose was like, OK, thank you. And then I was like, wow, OK. <laughs> I know what that means. That means get the hell out of here, <laughs> right? So. Um, I've been an artist in this industry for like three years now, and that was very early in my time. And I was still understanding the whole process of uh, walking in rooms. So I went back and I spoke with Jose again. I was like, hey man, I know you don't know me, but I would love to give it another shot if you don't mind. He's like, dude, you're like my first choice. <laughs> and I was like, whoa, really? He's like, yeah, I was like, because man, uh, if you give me another ch shot, I promise you, you're gonna love it. He was like, no, 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 don't worry about it. And a few days later, 
I had an email from Jose. He was like, hey, congratulations, you got the role of Simon, and the script was attached, and he told me the um, AD would be reaching out to me, and I ended up on set. And um, it was like my first time being in a feature film. And so I have Jose to thank for that, and everyone else. Yep. Yeah. I, I say that to all the actors. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, you got it. You got it. <laughs> you got this in the bag, dude. Um, we're running late, so we're just gonna I think about. Is there any question uh, in the audience? Anybody wants to? Uh, yes, Monty. Yeah, uh, thank you. It was raining. Thank you. Um, yeah, it was actually raining that day, so we were kind of fucked. It was, our, it was like our, our only exterior shoot. The producers were like, you know, go outside, open the movie up. It's too claustrophobic. It's a haunted house movie. You know, it's a fucking Lawrence Arabia. Anyway, so thanks to Allison back there, uh, my production coordinator, Allison Craig. She, she found us a cemetery, what was it, 10, 15 minutes away? It was fairly close, and we basically had to run on the place, so it was, it was pretty fantastic. Um, it was cold and rainy, but uh, yeah, I, I, I think that worked out. Thanks. Anyone else? Yes, sir. What, is, uh, what are you doing next? Uh, well, I guess well, there's too many people there, so I'll just talk. Um, <laughs> uh, I'm working on a web series right now called Rest for the Wicked. Um, hopefully, uh, it'll start coming out in December. Um, and it'll either be a three-season thing, or it'll be about a 12-episode run, miniseries kind of a deal, uh, noirish, film noir, crime thriller. Um, then in January, we're well right now writing a script for a kind of a David Cronenberg uh, type uh, movie about uh, music, uh, music as a drug, and uh, that one's gonna be really freaky. And it's probably we're probably gonna shoot it for less than we shot this movie, um, just because I don't want to wait around for money and I'd, I'd rather just do it. And um, I've, I've got the actors, and uh, I've got a camera. Kyle, thank you, sir. <laughs> and um, yeah, so that's, that's, that's what I'm working on next. Uh, do you want to plug H&G real quick? Um, sure. <laughs> uh, I just finished shooting uh, Reimagining of Hansel and Gretel that Jose wrote, uh, directed by Anthony C. Who walked out? He was here, um, but that that'll be out in January. That is also an asylum production, so that was a fun set. <laughs> it was a twelve-day shoot as well, and it was uh, it was a actually the most physical role that I've ever done. I had to do my own stunts, and it was interesting. <laughs> but it was fun, and um, also like Ariel mentioned earlier, we worked on or was it Lee? No, not sure. Lee mentioned yeah, no, yeah. Chemical Peel. No, uh, <laughs> well, we worked on a, another feature together called Chemical Peel, and that is finishing up being edited right now, and we are going to see a cut soon, so I'm excited about that. that was fun. Um, I'm sure you guys are all big horror fans, so that's another female-driven horror. Um, it's the mist meets cabin fever, for lack of a better description. Um, <laughs> But yeah, that that should definitely be fun. All right. <laughs> Thanks. Do. Um, <laughs> Thanks for that. Sure. Um, uh, nothing. All right. Well, um, thanks for coming, guys. I really appreciate it a lot. Uh, David, thank you for for hosting. Guys, thank you for for being in the movie. I appreciate it. And um, it's out on DVD and Blu-ray now. So if you liked it, please go spread the word. And. If you didn't, still spread the word. <laughs> uh, but not that you didn't like it, just that it's out there. Um, thank you guys, and uh, happy Halloween. <laughs>